It's weird with no people. Hey. I'm Gary, and we are Midwest Mike's coming back at you live from the Uclick TV studios right here inside the High V Arena, live on UclickTV.com today, and uh, it's going to be another great show. I'm excited to be here. I'm glad that uh, you guys are joining us. So, uh, Austin, you doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, you know, we were, we were talking before, before we kind of went live here, we were kind of talking be a good show today yeah definitely going to be a good show and bringing our uh, our guest here and then i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of introduce him and then i got something i want to talk about kind of right off the jump but uh josh sowers is joining us he is currently the voice of ut arlington and he works the sideline crew at at&t stadium does the internal pa for the red river shootout uh red river rivalry game uh, ou texas fc dallas camera Texas Legends camera, all UTA sports, so quite the uh, list of things going on there. Josh, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Good to be with you guys, and uh, yeah, it, it's quite the list. But uh, when you got a uh, when unfortunately you have a virus going around, it uh, there's not a lot anymore. But uh, anyway, good to be with you guys. Yeah, we. Uh, so the the thing I I told you guys I wanted to start the show off with was Rex Ryan was on Get Up this morning on ESPN and. I didn't see it live, but I, I saw the Twitter, the, the ESPN Get Up tweeted it out, and he was talking about the Amari Cooper signing with the Cowboys, and he called Amari Cooper a turd um, <laughs> and said that he never would have paid him. So I, I, I think Rex Ryan, there's a reason he's not coaching in the league anymore, and uh, you know he doesn't know Amari Cooper personally. To my knowledge, he's ne he never coached Amari Cooper. Uh, he was never, you know, around him as a player. So I don't think Rex Ryan can speak to what kind of person Amari Cooper is, whether he loves football or whether he doesn't. So Rex Ryan, I get it. You're on TV. You got to have stuff to talk about. But attacking Amari Cooper, the person, uh, you know, I I'm not a fan of that. And you know, I, I think that his stats since he came to Dallas have proven. Well, I mean, he, he's done a good job for the Cowboys. And, you know, maybe I would have gave him more like $18 million, But, you know, if 20 was the market, uh, I think that's that's what they did and that's what they should have done. Well, one thing, too, is that they, uh, I think the strategy that Jerry Jones is going with with the Cowboys is to uh, – Jerry thinks this is the team that can win him a championship. And so he's wanting to go ahead and lock him down. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, you know, whether you think he overpaid him or or it's the correct amount, um, we definitely we definitely probably all agree that he wasn't underpaid, right? He didn't take a it's not a team friendly friendly deal there. So it's either a little bit overpaid or or, or the correct price. Uh, I would say basically Jerry's idea with with the way he's trying to sign everybody and they still got to iron out Dax deal um, is that he thinks this is his team to take them all the way, and so he's just locking everybody down. So, uh, but but I I'll go with you. Uh, Rex Ryan, uh, call him a turd. Definitely not. That's not good. Um, if Ryan wants to say stuff like, "Oh, I, you know, I was watching game film and he does take routes off," which I have no idea if he does or not. Y'all would know more about that than me because I haven't watched that many Cowboy games a little bit. But uh, uh, do you guys? Does he take? Does he take plays off that you guys know about? Well. That almost goes back to last year. It seemed with coaching um, and, and Cooper. The reason, one of the reasons for the contract, 
he's done nothing wrong. I think he's a terrific player. I think he's a terrific human being. Uh, he loves being here. He loves the team. He loves uh, what is going to be now the new coaching staff. Uh, he's done nothing wrong. Uh, I think they paid him a very fair wage just because he's he's a guy that the Cowboys can market around especially, and I think he's a great running back. I don't know where Rex Ryan is coming from. The only connection the Ryan family has, Rob Ryan was the defensive coordinator for a couple of years back in the early 2000s. Uh, didn't quite work out, but that's really the only connection the Ryan family uh, has an immediate uh, Cowboys. But as far as Amari Cooper taking routes off, that's kind of been a debate around here, uh, at least in Dallas Fort Worth radio. Uh, you know, is that is that Garrett? Is that the fire? You know, prior coaching staff, or is that him taking routes off? We don't know. From what everything I've heard, I don't think he is. I think that's just the game plan of the, the former coaching staff. And uh, as we saw, obviously, that didn't quite work out to their favor. Yeah, and, you know, you mentioned the, the former coaching staff. I was probably the biggest deterrent to Jason Garrett staying there in Dallas and, you know, kind of uh, moving on from Amari, but talking about Dak's contract situation. I, I personally, as a fan, want to see him kind of play this year out under the new staff. I mean, I think Dak has performed well, but I don't think he's reached his ceiling because of the previous coaching staff. I felt like there was things Jason Garrett did that, that held this team back. And so why don't you talk a little bit about Dak and his performance over the last few years and, and where he is on uh, his contract? Yeah, and I would agree to that from maybe the uh, the team standpoint as far as waiting a year and seeing what's happening. But as far as a Dak, Dak way of looking at it, uh, he wants his money now. It's been now three years. I think he's proved himself uh, as a phenomenal quarterback, and he wants his money. Zeke proved himself, and Zeke's had more off-the-field issues uh, more than anybody yeah. uh, as far as the Cowboys in the last couple of years. He got his money. Well, now it's Dak's turn. It should be Dak's turn. Dak's a great quarterback. He doesn't get in trouble. He doesn't have off-the-field issues. And uh, I would be worried that if Dak doesn't get his contract, I, I think it's 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 almost like the NCAA. Do I, go, do I go to the league or do I stay another year in college? Oh, man, what if something happens? What if I tear my ACL? What if I'm never able to play again? I think it's payday for Dak, and I think they'll get a deal done. And I hope they get a deal done because I think Dak's a great quarterback. Yeah, I think they'll get a deal done too. I think the deal, and this actually with the with the with the uh, with the virus and stuff actually is giving them more time uh, to negotiate a little bit and try to figure out what they want to do. Um, but uh, you know, I uh, where do you guys have Dak ranked? Do you, is he where's he at? Is he top ten? Is he top ten QB? In, is he a top ten guy? Because I I don't think I don't I, I don't think I have him as a top five, but I, I think he's in top ten. Yeah, I think you're very fringe top seven, uh, something like that. I think he's definitely within the top ten. Uh, and we've seen him be a top five quarterback at times. We've also seen him be a yeah. top 20 quarterback at times. There was a couple games last year that we knew his shoulder was hurt and things were not working out. I think he's a player. I think he's going to go out there no matter what and say, this is my team. I'm going to get the job done. I think that showed a little bit last year, uh, especially late in the season where there were some throws like, man, you haven't been making those bad of throws. What's up? And Turns out, you know, shoulder injury shoulder. and all that. I think I, I don't know if he's not quite top five, but I think he's definitely within the top ten. And uh, obviously, I don't have a list in front of me or anything, but you know, I'd say he's probably the sixth, seventh, eighth best quarterback in the uh, in the league right now. Well, I'll say NFC, and I mean in the NFC, who would you take above this guy? So obviously, you'd take I would take Drew Brees. I think we could all agree I'd take Breezy over Dak. Yeah, uh, I would. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll take that. I'll take I'll. I mean, you know, I'll take Tom Brady over Dak because Tom Brady's NFC now. Um. Oh yes, as weird as that sounds. <laughs> Tampa. Yeah. I'm like, who else? Okay, so who else in the NFC would you take over Dak then? Besides those two guys, for sure. See, I think Matt Ryan is. Oh, you take Aaron, 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 Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, yeah. Maybe Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan's kind of on the fringe there. I mean, he he's another guy that's performed really well at times and then looked really bad at times. Is that the one? Is that maybe one of the yeah. the, the biggest the closest comparisons? Is maybe like. Dak's kind of like a like I'm not saying he plays exactly like Matt Ryan or anything like that, but like a Matt Ryan guy where he's like really 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 good, you know, not maybe close to elite, not always elite, you know, because Matt, Matt Ryan has has shown that he is, you know, can be that dude, you know. Uh, I would almost to, throw Russell Wilson. Yeah, I'll take Wilson. No, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no you're uh, good. 
But I, I would compare Dak more to a Russell Wilson than I would a Matt Ryan. We've seen Wilson be able to run the ball. We've seen Dak be able to run the ball. And that's when the Cowboys are at their best is when Dak can be a runner. Uh, yeah. he can, it, it's not necessarily an option, but he can he can strike to the middle. If he doesn't like his options, he's going to run for it. We saw that time and time again. Uh, I mean, he's already one of the best uh, – quarterbacks in Cowboys history as far as uh, rushing touchdowns go. So I, I would throw him more of the category with Russell Wilson. I think right now it's Russell Wilson by a hair over Dak Prescott just because we've seen some proven throws. But I, I, I wouldn't necessarily compare Dak to uh, Matt Ryan. And, and Matt Ryan's getting laid into his career just because Matt Ryan, he, he's not really more, he's not really that rusher quarterback. Heard, yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, but, but other than that, in the NFC, NFC, I mean, I don't know who else you take over, over Dak, so – you know, I think he he's he's there for sure. And the NFC, AFC obviously is you know Mahomes. You take Mahomes, you know Watson, I'd take Lamar, Mayweather, Lamar Jackson, take Lamar Jackson, Watson, um, which Watson may end up being a Patriot. Did you guys see that? I have not seen. On a side about note, that. so there's there's it, we're going and we're flip flopping a little bit, but just real quick while I'm thinking about it, uh, Vegas has odds out as far as like who will be the first, who will be the starting quarterback for the. New England Patriots come game one, and the uh, uh, the favorite right now is actually Deshaun Watson because the the Texans are rumored to be shopping him around, and the Patriots are thinking about taking a bite. So the rumored trade I saw was uh, it's like three first, it's like two or three first round picks, a second round, a sixth round, and then also like a guard that New England would ship off so they could create, and the guard would be to create this cap space to get Watson in, but if what, why would Houston story. why would Houston ever think about doing that? Whatever story is floated, whatever rumors there are, if it involves New England, I 100% believe it's going to happen because we've seen some wild things in the past. Bill Belichick's one of the greatest coaches uh, in the history of the NFL, and he can he can turn iron into gold. He can do just about anything. So whatever trade is proposed, it's probably going to happen. That's just kind of the attitude I have with the Patriots. So expect expect the unexpected with them. I was going to say also Houston uh, Houston's at a weird point right now because with their their trade of uh, of uh, of uh, what's his name Hopkins. Hopkins. Are you thinking like what are they doing? Are they are they going into rebuild mode again? I mean, it's the weird. It was the that was one of the weirdest trades I've seen. They were trying to get draft picks. Yeah. And you're just like, uh, I guess Houston is Houston thinking about resetting. Um, so that's just a kind of a bizarre deal because I really felt like they were. I mean, they were beating up on the Chiefs until the Chiefs kicked it on or kicked it on like uh, second quarter. Uh, they were, you know, they were putting to us. So I don't think the Houston's far off. So I don't understand why they'd rebuild. So uh, kind of goofy there. But. Hey, Josh, have you ever been to White yeah. House? Have you ever been to White House, Texas? White House, Texas, is actually the uh, home of one of our uh, UTA men's basketball players. Funny story: uh, McCade Marquis. His dad is the coach at Tyler Junior College. Well. McCade, uh, who's going to be going into his sophomore season with us, his sixth grade basketball coach was Patrick Mahomes in White House. And uh, uh, our point guard, McCade, he is best friend with uh, Mahomes' younger brother. Well, we had uh, coach, uh, his high school coach, which is now the AD at, at White House, uh, on. And what a hoot. Have, if you ever get a chance, um, have him on as a guest sometime. I know you don't do football at UT Arlington, but uh, what, a, what, a, what a hoot. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I've seen him at, at, at some point. But yeah, McCade, he's uh, he's coming off his redshirt freshman year, and yeah, he's always showing uh, Snapchat vids and Instagram vids of uh, uh, Pat Mahomes' younger brother. And uh, wow, what a what a time! Yeah, um, you know, kind of going back to the the Cowboys there. You know, like I said, I was a big proponent of getting rid of Jason Garrett. What was the the mood like? I mean, you've been you know kind of around the team and and stuff for a few years. So, what was the mood like? You know, especially last year as kind of more and more pressure was being put on Garrett. Well, the mood, and especially from the fan base, was, you know, it's 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 about time. And before I go any further, Jason Garrett, I think, is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Uh, you know, I, I you wish him the best, and, you know, it all goes back to a football standpoint uh, from that sense. And then the 11th hour, you know, stories we were hearing was if they couldn't get a deal with McCarthy, there was a good chance the Cowboys were going to re-sign uh, Jason Garrett again and I think that wouldn't have been a good idea just from a fan base perspective because it, it started it started getting stale a few years ago and uh, what do you do when things get stale you throw them away and I think it just took a little too long for that uh, like I said I'm not questioning I think Jason Garrett's one of the smartest coaches you can ever have I think him going to the Giants as an offensive coordinator is a genius move and so 
hopefully we're playing football in September, and I can't wait for that first game for the Cowboys and the Giants. But I mean, it just it was time for something new because we haven't had something new in many years, going back to Wade Phillips when Garrett was, you know, the offensive coordinator under Wade. So we, we've seen this regime for, you know, nearly you know, 12, 13 years now. So now let's get something new. Let's get something fresh. And for Jerry Jones, yeah, you know, he, he's getting he, – 